Flat Earth British, Martin Leitzka speaking. Hiya guys, welcome back to the great Flat Earth British think tank for what will be a lot of laughs and a very juicy post indeed. So it is absolutely fantastic to be back, very excited, always excited to come back to Flat Earth British after a few days off. I did do a live post, a live event last night on a great Flat Earth British think tank channel uh, because I tried to post a post yesterday and for one reason or another I kept ballsing it up <laughs> so I'm here today okay and hopefully um, I've got another post lined up um, for the Flat Earth British Think Tank channel following this probably for Flat Day so good to see you all guys and um, thank you for what has been this week apparently 24,000 subscribers on the Martin Leaker channel which I want to thank you for I'm very very grateful I guess in a few of you um new arrivals have turned up from John Levy's channel all right thanks John epic shout thanks my brother um so you're new to flat with British aren't you okay okay you need a happy hat okay and you need to let your hair down if you've got any okay if you haven't metaphorically let it down okay <laughs> okay this is going to be pure escapism okay there would be a be laughs all the while but we're going to be looking into a very spooky and sinister subject we're going to be looking into petrified people and i don't mean all of them out there for a tv virus i mean um turned to stone or stoned people it's more to the point in the past now i really do think at this stage from what i'm about to show you okay through different narratives historical you know myth and everything else that in some time in the past okay they they were petrifying people in stone wax working people into wax and um, as far as I can make out um, which we look at in this post um, using um, infants and mummies to fuel trains and we'll look into that narrative as well so there's a lot in this post we're gonna be looking at the fantastic images of the day we're gonna have a tour through Brazil in fantastic color um, in 1850s and it's not what you'd expect okay it's fantastic we're gonna think about the apocalypse the unveiling of the apocalypse and we'll look at some images of Sodom and Gomorrah um, another place where somebody was vitrified into stone as in Lot's wife all fit into the narratives can be very enjoyable buckle in have fun okay it's great to see you guys I'm really happy so make sure to keep subscribing all Flat Earth British channels, okay? And I'll just share my Brian thoughts um, along the way. Okay, probably a thousand of them. Say so, so. Up your vibration. You happy? You excited? Good. You should be. <coughs> so, me. so let me just get myself orientated because I balls this up twice yesterday. For some reason. I couldn't get my shit together. It goes, it goes like that. I'm in, a abs I'm in a really naughty mood today. Naughty, not give a fuck mood. So things should go along swimmingly. I tend to overthink things, trying to be a perfectionist and balls myself up. You know, there is a, a you know, a line to perfection, isn't there? So you know, I always like to try to do beyond that. Weirdly, but that's me. Anyway, share this out, share the show, have fun. Okay, we're gonna start here. Petrified humans human beings do indeed turn to stone turn to stone when you're coming home i can't go wrong a yellow lots of contemporary music will tell you about turning to stone so what we're looking at here is um, fossilized or petrified bodies from pompeii now a lot of people say these plaster of paris bodies etc are fake but um, what i think is is I think the um, earthquake, or excuse me, the volcano um, erupting and a pyroclastic flow uh, coming along and turning these people into stone may have been the case, but I really do think that these people were fossilized in um, a plasma discharge event. Why do I think this? Because the people at Herculaneum were still skeletons. It seems to be very, very selective. Maybe the, the pyroclastic flow didn't reach as far. What you get is a lot of these infants as well. Okay, you see their skeletal remains inside these. Inside these. Some you will see feet, bones sticking out. See, I'm not getting that. 
there's like a series of pictures of last kiss the lovers i'm like what so like you know instead of getting the fuck out of dodge when there's a pyroclastic flow on the way and you're about to be burnt to death in thousand degrees there's time for a quickie see that that's not ringing true to me and i'm gonna take a last look at my family before the pyroclastic flow turns me into stone so there's something afoot there i'm not sure that's a real image but <laughs> Roman in a miniskirt. So yeah, they um they show the skeletal remains. So these were, you know, they are regarded as being people turned to stone. Also in a pyroclastic flow, or in indeed in a plasma discharge event, apparently your knob falls off. And then apparently somebody steps on it and it squishes out. I don't actually know if that's the case. It's open for interpretation, but they seem to have um stone penises in uh, Pompeii. I don't know. It's in an Atlas Obscura there. Tempted to go and have a look, but we won't. So I'll link this up. But anyway, so there's a thing, guys, okay, that people get turned to stone. Now, if you remember, we've been looking into artworks, impossible artworks of Benini um, and other sculptures, and just absolutely fascinated by the fields. Almost as if they've put human beings inside these statues. Now, Going on what has happened lately, okay guys, going on what has happened lately, I wouldn't put anything past these, okay, anything. So, I'm going to think that they may be, as some sort of punishment, um, maybe fossilise people in stone. Do you really think that's a thing, guys? The last thing they were about to do before they get like pyroclastic, maybe, maybe a, a hug and embrace, a quick kiss before <laughs> turn the stone. That guy's knocking one out quick before he dies. <laughs> oh my god, almighty, I wish I'd started this. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, let's have a look at this. Oh dear, dear, dear. How soon my vlogs go downhill. But there you go. So anyway. They solidify. Now I'm going to show you some images. Okay. Of other people. That have solidified. Now this is in Massini. In the earthquake that happened in Italy. I think it was 1906 or 8. Excuse me if I'm wrong. And what you got here is a lady breastfeeding. And she has been instantly turned into stone because of the impossible heat. She's melded into bricks and debris. But if you look at her face, she looks exactly like one of these Phoenician statues. Even the kid looks a bit like a Cherubinowski. And the material. If you notice how she's grabbing the material. And the way the material fits. It's like vacuumed into her body. Well, you're going to see in the statues this exact thing replicated. Is it not possible or conceivable? There's some technology going on. There's quite a few amounts of skeletal remains you'll find inside statues. Here's a Buddhist statue. Um, where is a skeleton of a human being inside it? And there's also a narrative, okay, for petrified man in New York State, and all across America, Nevada, California, everywhere. The newspapers in America in the 1800s, around 1862, told everybody they found petrified men, or petrified people, okay? Now, to show how it really hard it is to foist a moral truth upon the unsuspecting public through the burlesque without entirely, absurdly missing one mark, I will... Here, set down the experience, uh, two experiences of my own in this thing. In the fall of 1862 in Nevada and California, the people got to running wild about extraordinary petrifications and other natural marvels. One could scarcely pick up a paper without finding it in one of the glorified discoveries of this. So what you find is the newspapers were telling you all over that they were finding these petrified people and giants as well and I think this was um, overthrown by what I now believe and I will post about this week or tomorrow um, the Cardiff giant because they said it was a hoax and I'm thinking this petrified giant is one of these petrified people from this this event and um, anomalous tech you know in a Buddha as well you can see what look like dog tags 
not sure about skeletal remains, but certainly some technology. Some of them get really, really trippy. Like this one. So you've got this, this Buddha, and you get an x-ray of it, and it shows, well, maybe organites, I don't know, but an obelisk wrapped in wire to give it a charge. This is all gone technology Buddha. Yeah, I know. But what I found really sinister was in this lion, okay, which you get all over Egypt, there is an infant, a mummified infant inside it. And I thought to myself, oh Christ, would they be so sick as to do this with infants? mummified infants. Now I'll get show you a little further along in this post. It's not as outlandish as you might think. Would they? Would they in Trafalgar Square put bodies or infants or remains of human beings in their lions? Now we would have to x-ray them to find out but these are all over Christendom and wouldn't they love it in Trafalgar Square, the centre of the pentagram, the epicentre for magic, the place where the Palmyra Arch was put a couple of years ago, Babylon Central, and they let families and children climb all over these things for snaps and photographs. Wouldn't that really be them, and wouldn't they be that sick, because we know what they're up to now, as to put remains in here? You know, there are, you know, talk out there, in, you know, that they put remains under altars and stuff. There is a narrative out there in Greek mythology, you know, where three oracles get put inside of a, of a calf or a cow. And they get boiled inside and kept in the remains. I'm thinking this may be the narrative from, for Moses, you know, when they say, talk about the golden calf. I'll show you later on. You know, if you're going to choose an idol, a shit calf is not one to choose I can assure you that it's rubbish unless, unless there was something inside of it. Hmm? Okay. What about this? What about this? Let's get back to these images. Excuse me. Oh. So, yeah, you find um, anomalous stuff inside these, a lot of these. This is uh, obviously a mother, Teresa, but she's jam packed full of nails inside, all pointing in. Could she have been a victim of the Iron Maiden? Is there a person inside there? Yeah, no, you have to x-ray them all. I can't imagine all of them having humans, but some of the ones we're looking at, you really do wonder whether or not there's humans inside. Now, Cherubinowski says we're going to find out later in this vlog are lethal and not nice at all, okay? But it's blowing you a kiss. So flawless art, you, you know, it just affects the consciousness. They nailed it, you know, the Phoenicians with exquisite art. Now some of it, it can be chisels in stone, but once you get to some of them, you find that there's veins, and honestly, the look on their face looks like the last look on a face the person would ever have. Some of them are, are, are so sad. Some of them have shock. Um, I. I can't imagine what's inside this statue, but it's full of stuff, and there's stuff in her eyes as well. I can't see skeletal remains, but still stuff inside. And as I showed you with Messina, Messina, the way that lady was gripping the material, very, very aesthetically pleasing and something to the eye and consciously about this for myself personally but along with classical music you can't really fault it so the veil itself can it be that they put the veil on and it's a technology for turning them to stone there's Teresa she's having a moment alone with the Holy Ghost but look at this carpet a stone as well that's a Benini I think it's in the Parthenon See the way they grip the material, and it's always an emphasis on the material. I'm thinking it's like a vacuumization or a process with this, you know, that it's just overwhelming with the veils, guys, in these statues. It's more to it. You know, the apocalypse means the unveiling. Is this the real meaning of the unveiling? Find out. Look at her looking right at you. Oh, what about the school of thought for it then? I don't know. I think this might be made of amber. 
Um, it's a chest plate for a statue that's not very good. We'll see it in a minute. Flawless art. But look at the hairs. How would you suspect you do that? I know you, a lot of you are going to say 3D printed, stuff like that. But I think it's a process. Maybe some resonation coupled with a dip in a tank of vat stuff. But some can be interpreted as statues, I guess, but it's always this look with the flowing, clinging fibres or materials, which is what they say is prowess for the artist. I'm not buying that. It's like impossible art. Is that not flawless? What happens if you get up one morning and you've been, like, say, drinking the night before? And you slip once with the chisel. Yeah, you've got to just chuck the, the, the marble away and start all over again, guys. And, you know, you could keep that up forever. So is that a statue or is that a man really gripping a cloth? Look at the hands. The dirt, the nails. Doesn't that look like a human being? Can it be? And also study cemetery art. I'm thinking some of this cemetery art as well, because a lot of them are just too lifelike. They just capture something. And that one is like a knowing. A sad knowing, maybe. I really like that. Hawk. Hmm. So a lot of these statues of Benigni are based on Ovid, um, the story of metamorphosis, the story of people turning into animals, cryptids, plants, etc. Um, and a lot of them are laced with the hermetic art, etc. In the classical world, you'll find overlaps. How is this possible? How is that done? Even the nails in stone, in stone, really. The vein? Well, it's the mind of a great genius, and there seem to be a lot of great geniuses around then. I do have a person, an artist, that goes into my comments saying he can pull some stuff off like this, but what? Like a marble cloth over a bronze? How is that even done? Hmm. Ah, uh, don't worry, it'll be alright. You got a lot of statues like the kiss, like Rodin's kiss. So Mel took that photograph in a cemetery in Nottingham back a couple of weeks last month, and a literally fantastic composition photograph. This woman looks like she's been caught in the moment. Just shrink wrapped. Solidified. She has some sort of giant crystal there. Do you see what I mean? And by the life sucked out of her in a moment. So there seems to be a lot of love going on with the Phoenicians, doesn't there? Not too much in the way of messing stuff up. That's pretty cool, cemetery art. So. That's how we all end up, apparently. Skeletons. It's not a weird thing. What are you saying? What are you telling us? I'm going to throw my discus, is what I'm going to do. Yeah, of course you are. What about this lady? Haunting. She's haunting me. This is stunning. I love this one. Cemetery art again so lifelike it's hard to even imagine isn't that stunning isn't that absolutely stunning sad obviously this is the type of nightmare the wars create guys see people like this and times like now as well create situations like that I don't doubt it at all Abby wouldn't be surprised in a year time, but if we were all still here, they'd be giving out an NHS suicide packs. You've got a choice. You can catch it and have a minging time and we'll get all to you in hospital. We've got enough money now. we made a lot. Off all them fines and off all them respirators, etc. We don't need any more. 
plus we're not going to be around for much longer. We're leaving you all to it. <laughs> Thanks. So what are they leaving us to? That. The Gorgon. And the Gorgon, the Medusa. Okay, if you stare at the Medusa, she has serpents in her head. So we interpret it as an electromagnetic charge or some sort of like fascist weapon or even plasma, if you like. Plasma. You stare at the Gorgon, you're going to what? That's right. Turn to stone, they tell you. And, but you can look in the Gorgon, in Theseus's case, in a reflection in his shield, or a mirror, or a mirror, you can look at it. It's the eagle that blinds us. So that turns you to stone as well. So it's there in the narrative, is it not? Quite a bit, actually. What about her? She's looking right at you. It's not uncanny. They always, even on statue buildings, no matter which way you walk past the building, they'll always catch your eye, these statues looking down. It's really weird. Like they follow you. Again, look at this. I just get this itchy feeling that this is, we're looking at a human being here, especially the way that the, you know, it carries. It's just too weird and haunting lifting the veil Concordia for flowers and an angel of death and what's he have with him why would an angel of there's a face in there Why would you have a fasces, guys? Is it, is it a thing of peace? Can you see that? It's a face. It's a lady. The hair. And there's a hand on his shoulder as well. Okay, Photoshop of Trippy. I hope it's Photoshopped. If not, that's really trippy. We caught a ghost. Wow, that's strippy. Whew. But yeah, the angel death has a fashe showing you that, you know, this place gets ultimately reset. See how many? Overwhelmingly with these veils in cemeteries. This one is just one of the best I've ever seen. It's almost like you can see the down or the hairs on her back. The way the light catches it, even a spider's web. Masterpieces, exquisite. The best things that they've produced in this realm. That's why we look at these things. Can't go wrong with showing a masterwork or an art, a masterpiece artwork, can you? Because they're that. But look at the hair. How'd you do that with your chisel? And the blemishes. And that is um, or Ovid's metamorphosis. She's turning into a plant and a tree. So it's a time of change. Or, I guess, reset again. And the eagle with the wings open. Why is he chained? Greek mythology again, I guess. But the eagle's wings open, we will see about later its meaning. The way the light catches out. <gasps> Sublime art. What are you on about? Don't know what he's on about. It's Teresa again, we're having a Holy Ghost moment. Teresa and a Phoenician in two shells. That's quite an unusual piece, isn't it? Shh, about it though. About what? Sorry, we already know. You best did, you're gone anyway. I will smite you! So there's a lot of that going on in the past, apparently. There's a uh, smacking females about, apparently. Not sure. 70s was a bit weird. Men were like completely fucking stupid, weren't they? 17 points. Come on. Beat living bells out of a wife. And again. That. So the 80s weren't were much better. Completely different world now. Completely different world. I don't even know where I am. So Mandala affected, or so many timelines have pulled past in the last year or so. Don't know which one we're on anymore. 
It's all very, very, very confusing. I try not to think about it. I try not to overthink things anymore. Just go with the moment. Try not to overthink. So it's not to, you know, mess my Brian up. Yeah, I know. The hair. It's fantastic, isn't it? So, I have many, many of these. And I will share some more. These are collection two of... This is classical art, by the way. Um, file two of stone art. A different collection from the first. See her, see her around a lot, seen it before. Bacchus's bird, I think it is. Bacchus's bird. So yeah, a lot of uh, hugging and caressing and kissing going on with the old angels and Phoenicians, isn't it? She'd be listening to Flat Earth British. She fell asleep. So I'm not offended. I don't know. No. I know it's not because I'm really, really boring. Anyway, we've got some great fun to come. I'll share some more of these at a later time because there's too many of them to share. That's beautiful. Look at this. Jeez. Nothing is just a cemetery art. Ah, oh, this was one of my favourites ever. This lady doing writing. Yeah. All of this tassels on the chair. Every single bit of that carved in stone. Marble, even. <laughs> hmm. Exquisite, that one. I always like that one. And they go crazy with the lace. And they do like to show one breast as part of their Phoenician thing. And breast busts, as in head. Head in a jar. Head in a jar and a veil. So this statue is pretty crap. But it's got an absolutely fantastic, what looks like amber breastplate. Mm, that one's weird. That's in a museum. That looks definitely like a dead person. And beautiful cemetery art, which I do love, cemetery statues. Okay, fantastical. Impossible. Pristine. Flawless. Another gold breastplate. And crazy, crazy Phoenician hat. Yeah, absolutely wicked these. Wicked pictures. So another mermaid climbing up the wall. Pretty. And that's in a cemetery, just a bog standard cemetery. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. A bear skin or a chair, also carved out of stone. I know. So they've had to do each strand of hair, guys. <laughs> and there's some petrified bodies to show you this. It's supposed to be a real thing, which I think it definitely is. Look at this. See, she looks caring. She's like, ah, oh, I love them. There's a chicken hammock. Also been listening to Flat Earth British. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. No, it's nothing to do with being naked women. It's just because the statues. It's really interesting art and flawless and these are bits of stone and looking like human beings it's a crazy fascination that human beings apparently have but i don't get it i don't get it like maybe get it with the statues yeah but with other forms of human expression i'm not getting at all which i will show you on oh, my days look at that it's all marble even the way it is all like scrunched up is marble. Again, the jug's out. <sighs> She's happy. They must have conned her. Said it'll be all right. So yeah, other other um, expressions of impersonating or showing human form. Okay, this one looks exactly 
a lifelike. The hair. I wouldn't even say that was a statue. I'd say that was a person. Look at it, guys. Look at the hair. How, 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 how? Curls, curls. Spooky, eh? And the pinched skin. Which always fascinates me. And the hair. In the air. Or stone. And again with a veil. Okay, and the Gorgon. Again, who blinds us. Gorgon, who petrifies. So, yeah, um, Pan. He's got hoofy woofies. Now, Pan, like Pandemic, or Peter Pan, who's a boy that never grows up and goes to Neverland with Tinkerbell and everything else. Um, Pan is people. If you know what Pan's people are, they were a dancing group from Top of the Pops back in the day. Mildly attractive. <laughs> Watch the hustle on YouTube, Pan's people. So Panspermia, um, Pan, obviously Demic, uh, Pan America, Pandemonian. Just think of the words with Pan in the beginning, and this is the dude who's half a goat who goes around chasing women. She looks 1920s. So. There again. The lace. Stone. Unfathomable. Unfathomable. So there's some statues. Now, there's other formats as well of stupidness with impersonating. This one I can't get. Okay. Now, when I was 11 year old, I went on holiday to Blackpool in the north of England. And they had a Louis Two Souls museum, which was a waxworks, which was her brother. Okay. Madame Two Souls. This is her wax impersonation impersonation it's stupid on so many levels guys i went in there it's like oh look at michael jackson yeah it looks like michael jackson it's shit place stunk and the waxworks look crap they were all crap the place was crap i i was well i'm glad i didn't pay because i would have wanted my money back for crapness so i'm not getting it okay what if what if crazy bastard here okay which she was here she is, Madame Two Souls, at the age of 90 in 1850. Yeah, she was born in the mid 1700s. This woman apparently survived a reset. Okay, so what's her fascination is with making people look as human as possible. So if you can pay money, go around and say, "Oh, look, that looks like Henry VIII," which is shit. So there it was. It was a big Italian building. She picked it up in the 1850s. Madden Two Souls in 1884. Okay? Where you go and you look at crappy waxworks. Now I'm thinking it's really spooky. Okay? There it is in 2015 and the famous planetarium. This is Baker Street, a bit further up. It's 121. Uh, Baker Street, which is the fictitious Sherlock Holmes's gaff. So she's um, French. I can't read French, but she came to Britain. She bought 58 Baker Street. Portman Square, okay, um, early on, and this is the type of thing, the place was Phoenician, no doubt, because look at the decoration, and it's absolutely fantastical inside, um, so, for me, if I was a cleaner in that building, you know, it would put the willies right at me, I would be like, did, did she fucking turn her head then, did she looking at me, because it's really weird, they look lifelike, and you're walking through on your own, I don't like it, I think it's weird, and I think it's spooky, so there's a little place where they knock these up. But it had a fire in 1930 and it completely demolished the building. Leaving one facade and melting all of the bodies inside. Giving some really horrendous and spooky imagery. I think some of these may have been bodies. Going on they had grave snatchers and the rest. So here it is body snatches and the rest <laughs> so I think they would have done it so here's the building you see this facade exists today and the rest was completely burnt this was one big fire as that was a big building and it melted all of the wax dummies or wax people Jesus a load of Cherubinuskis and a big pile of arms isn't that weird isn't that sinister Now, it gets weirder because in the photographic records it really does look like some of these might be alive, 
Okay, these are some of the people that got like um, the dummies that got waxed. Look, uh, got heated in the fire. Survivors of the fire. Look at Michael Palin. He's look at the shock. Oh my God, this fire. Look at it. Too lifelike. All right, not that one. And a couple of heads on the floor. Don't tell me that's not weird, guys. I don't know what your interpretation of this is. To me, it's shit, it's weird, and there's something else going on. No human being wants to go off on a Sunday and see this crap. Tell me if you want to go and see that crap, because I'm telling you what, it's shit, guys. It is. I can think of 5,000 things better doing, better to do on a Sunday than go to the two souls. I'm not sure what's going on here. Then They don't look wax. These are survivors of the fire. They got no heads. Looks like they've been coloured in a bit as well. Um, but they look like they got feet. Yeah. So I'm not sure what happened. Is that not the freakiest image you possibly have seen today? One of them. Yeah, I know. Don't lose your head about it. Please share this out, guys. Now this actually might be the real Marie Antoinette. How do we know how the Phoenicians think? They do like sacrifices and they kill children and their pedos and everything else. So maybe, like with head in a jar that I've been talking about all along, they kept the head of Marie Antoinette and waxed it. Because this is Marie Antoinette and they were so, so utterly psychopathic about it. They even had the blood coming off out of her nose where she had her head cut off and even, even a nice big splat of blood on her cheek from where she had her head cut off. And then she opens her eyes and start saying the Lord's Prayer. Apparently that's the narrative when they chopped her head off in Tower um, the Tower of London. She started saying the Lord's Prayer after she had her head chopped off. So that could actually be Marie Antoinette. Some of the heads are really big so I'm guessing, you know, that is really lifelike. Really spooky. Wouldn't you say? What a strange place to work. I know. Oh, wax. Oh, these poor, poor chicks, they survived the fire, but look, their head went all like... Flop. And like, flop. Sad that one. Sad that one. This is too spooky. See this Cherubinuski, this kid, right? He's taking his brother to see it and he's like traumatized. He's like, oh my god, I'm so scared. And he's like, it's all right, brother, I'm scared. He goes hands on his shoulder. These two are petrified, guys, because this is so fucking wrong and spooky. Look at his face. Tell me, don't look evil. Huh? Look at him. Cool. I could spot a wrong one, guys. He's a wrong one. What about this? This is so scary and creepy. So, I hope you're enjoying your Friday night at Flight of British. We do do things a bit differently around here than the normal YouTube. I'm sure you've noticed by now. So, I think they're having a conversation. Yeah, He's looking right at her like he's having a conversation. And she's like, oh really? Is that what it was like when you were alive? Yeah, yeah, I was made. A made man. Look at me now. Uh, he looks like he's looking right at her. He's looking off into the distance. She's sort of as well. But yeah, he's looking right in her eyes. Spooky. I don't know what that is. And I don't know what's in there. Also looking spooky. His visor looks spooky. And that thing into there looks spooky. It's all spooky. They look like they're alive. It's like, to you know, like talking heads. I can't identify any of these people. That could be Mosley or something. Um, not sure he's looking right at you though. Oh, that's fucking hell. Alan, Alan Sugar, isn't it? You're fired. So, yeah, we're anyway, still going now. You can visit it. I'm not advertising it. Can't stand the place. Um, you need hands. So, um, yeah, they got a load of hands. Just like a thing off of the Adams family. You know, it's like a hand in a box. Fucking epic. I'd like a, I'd like one. <laughs> Oh look, Saddam Hussein. Looking right at me. How are you feeling? Yeah, it's not too bad. Feeling alright, mate. Feeling alright. Been a bit heady. <laughs> I'm alright. Taking a lot of the vat. This is what they're doing. Queen Elizabeth, 1977, Madden Two Souls. Looks absolutely nothing like Queen Elizabeth. And he's really hard on the eyes. Looks like she's got a bit of a habit as well. Yeah. 
fun if you want to that in your head. So, yeah. Oh, George V, what a bastard he was. But, like, you know, he's got, like, the biggest jewel in the world there, like, in his scepter. You've got the African star to center, you know, to get a beam going through it. If he'll uh, centralize a beam. He's got his orb, he's got his crown. His fronage. But he's wearing a pair of lady stockings and a pair of lady shoes. So, that's why he's got a face like a smacked ass. Henry VIII, in case you don't know what he's looking at, we copied it from the painting. Is that what Henry VIII looked like, ma'am? Yeah, he looked just like that. A fat bastard. So, um, bring in Chamberlain. Yeah, alright then. Have Hitler first, and uh, Mussolini, and whoever. And then bring Chamberlain in later, then, guys. He should have been the first. He's actually British. And he's got a piece of paper that's not worth the paper it's written on. What else we got here? Uh, could be John Lennon. Maybe. Or it could be. Benjamin Disraeli. So yeah, we got uh, Mussolini. I'm guessing this might be Ribbentrop. Adolf Hitler, who's looking very camp in his Hugo Boss grey uniform, um, and he's doing a I'm a little teapot. They did that on purpose. Shall we gay up Hitler? Baggy trouser him or get his arm on the side? <laughs> they would do that, wouldn't they? Bad press going round. So yeah, this freaks me out. Fred and Ginger Rogers, right? Fred and Ginger. Freaks me out because, alright, Fred looks like he's fake. But in this plastic fantastic reality, he's not worse than Arnold Schweizenegger or um, fucking Stallone, is he? Because they're plastic fantastic at the moment. They don't even look human. But look at Ginger's eyes, guys. Yeah? She even got a wonky fucking tooth. Ginger Rogers, except for the, probably the hair, because loads of ladies got shiny stuff going on, yeah? She looks real. Yeah? She looks nice. Ginger Rogers looks real. So what a place to spend your evening. It's like, wow. Freaky and scary. They fucking murdered the Beatles, guys. Do you know what happened to the first Paul McCartney? Yeah, they put him in the dip and put him in Madame Tussauds. There he is there. That's your first Paul McCartney fall, okay? <laughs> Poor Ringo star. Poor Ringo. Fourth. Worst Beatle. I'm one of the worst drummers in rock and roll. You've got, you're have got. you not exactly Keith Moon, are you? I know. Your son's pretty good, though. You got a job with the Who. Um, oh, my God. What did they do to George? He's got fangs. And John Lennon doesn't look like John Lennon, does he? Yeah. What's yellow and lives off Beatles? Yoko Ono. So there's a film called Carry On Screaming. I used to love the film. Um, this woman here, right, she looks like Matisha Adams she says, do you mind if I smoke? And she lays down and all smoke like comes out of her body yeah, it's wicked so yeah, basically the narrative for this is is they kidnap people off the street usually attractive young ladies they dip, dip them in that and they turn them into statues and mannequins, etc or, odd bod, he loses his finger sticks it in this machine, they give him electricity and he, he literally metamorphosizes and grows another odd bod from his finger yeah, yeah, it's classic stuff guys so yeah, um, they basically put him in the dip ok, we all love a bit of carry on films, don't we, you know, Kenneth Williams yeah. Hattie Jakes so yeah a lot of electric used and then they put him in a dip and then they come out. He got dipped in the end, Kenneth Williams, because he's basically the baddie in this story. Or the goodie, depending on how you look here. Um, and he's like, who could destroy my beautiful wickedness into the vat? And he also gets turned into a statue. So as you can see, I've just given you probably a dozen narratives for... Actually, they might be putting, making people statues or wax. What about this? Or highly freaky. Now, remember I just showed you the picture of that mummified child inside of a lion, and I su supposed to you, could it be that? Oh look, there's um, Pan shagging a goat, ram goat. Uh, could it be? Could it be um, that they are putting mummies into all statues for the bad energy? Well, think about this for a second. There were so many of them in Egypt back in the 1800s, okay, that they were literally putting infant mummies, so children, into the locomotives to run them. How do I know it's children? Because the hatch is a bit too big for an adult mummy, so they must have been smaller, so animals and children. There's plenty of narratives on there, it's been known. So mummies were used 
uh, were also ground up and used as medicine. And there are even reports of mummies being used for fuel locomotives. Ground up mummies were used to paint with uh, in the pigment known as mummy brown. Uh, they were used. E uh, they were even used to make oils, soaps, and incense. So there was a big industry in mummy parts. Guys, these are possibly dead children, dead people. So what they're actually saying here is they fueled trains with dead children and dead people. They ground up the dead people, which are mummies, and they made pigments called mummy brown, and they made oils, soaps, and incense. A bit like the narrative of World War II with the dead. They had so many, they made a fallow factory where they were making oil of the dead, from the dead. So they were basically fueling trains with mummies, because they were so plentiful. That's a beautiful imagery. Well, we're going to look at some stunning imagery along the way, guys. I've got some fantastic stuff. Would you be able to get that in the door of the boiler? I'm not sure. So sure, it's only a little hatch, just a little bit bigger than a shovel. Um, maybe, maybe. But why mummies? It's not sinister why they would burn mummies. So, uh, as you know, a lot of mummies are children, and a lot of mummies are cats, and dogs, and animals as well. So they're using them. So I'm surmising they wouldn't stop at just an adult. So even that is horrendous. They are definitely sick as hell. And they are Phoenicians. Look at this one. Beautiful painting on it. So they used them to fuel trains and for medicine, possibly solidifying and petrifying people in their sick practices. How deep does this rabbit hole go? These are infant mummies. Now I've basically know a person in my, my life history who's a creator in a museum actually and she's um, a field is actually mummies infant mummies and animal mummies so it's more than a coincidence in my life that this should come up really thinking about it so yeah yeah mummies there they are ten, 10 month olds they're quite common uh, oh my days so yeah later on and we're going to be looking into the very very weird history of the middle ages and how people were conducting themselves and what they were thinking and what the hell was going on chilean scientists outrage of an infant girl's mummy with an elongated head and like a spike on top see this is that even a human saying it's alien from alien from atacama God, this is horrendous. So, scary and mind blowing to think that they were doing that, fueling them with mummies, and the carelessness of how they treat the dead in this place, eh? That is beautiful. Look at that. And that's just for a coffin cover. Wow. See, this doesn't paint 2,000 years ago to me. This is recent Middle Ages gap. This is only hundreds of years old, as these mummies are. Phoenician mummies, not Egyptian. Oh, highly, highly spooky. I'm getting all shivery. Anyway, we're moving on. So another mode of vitrification. I'll share you this. This is a, excuse me, a lead van der Haar out of the 1733 of the apocalypse. It shows you Sodom and Gomorrah, Moses, magic going down and a whole load of bad things like the plagues uh, the seven plagues which we're going to look at now so um, basically what you have is um, fire brimstone plasma discharge event taking out sodom and gomorrah which looks like a greco-romano world but you find all of this is set in the middle ages don't ask me how these images are created they're too mind-blowing and People are trying to get out of Dodge. I've got the sirens going in the background now. So weird lately. Well, it would be this pandemic happening, isn't it? Birds even falling from the sky. Cities in the distance crumbling. People trying to panic into bunkers, you see. Even take the camels into the bunkers. And how many of them bunkers do we see in them depictions we look at, guys? This happens. Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, Lot's wife, she's supposed to have looked back. And got into a pillar of salt. Oh, 
of stone. So, that is the plasmary discharge of Sodom and Gomorrah. You get some of the biblical plagues. This one is insects, locust, coming in by the million. And check this city. And buckets and buckets of locust eating everything, attacking everyone. Look at the size of these buggers, they're massive as well. So that was the biblical plague of um, locust. And then you have darkness as well, which is a really sinister one. You can't even look at it in you, it looks mud flooded. Do you see? But they can't see their hand in front of their faces. No, the masonry's buried. Everything's wrecked from that event. And there's mud, deep mud, guys. Wouldn't you? Can you see it? It's like a sea of mud. Can you see that? Yeah. Wow. So anyway, yeah, night is a skyscraper thing there, aren't they? But yeah, night is perpetual, which would be really spooky, especially if the power went out. And uh, they're gonna black us out this winter. It would be helpless to them. It's organised before that happens. Um, I've been talking on my vlog last night. I'm going to maybe have to start a GoFundMe or something to get for Barry of Britain. Because this thing's been going a year. It's set up you know, in different countries, different continents. And there's nothing in, in Britain you know, where the inception you know, start originated, etc. So our friends, you know, like John Leave, he's, he's doing, uh, he's got land himself. And Campbell, um, autodidactic, Perth. Australia, he's got 160 acres, something like that, setting up breakaway. So a lot of us are getting on this, a lot of us have got Barbaria together, guys, but really do need Barbaria in Britain, okay? You know, I have across four channels coming up to 60,000 odd subscribers at this moment, guys. You know, that's not a shy amount. You know, imagine if I had one quid off of every subscriber, and I wouldn't even want that to any sense. I'm just saying it would be enough to buy land, to build log cabins, and start barrier get lots get people somewhere where you can expand it think positively and make it happen so yeah um, this is Moses's golden calf where they were all worshipping when basically Moses he come back with his tablet or pissy he's just been having the word of his mate God because he's God's mate or something um, and they were all like sort of gallivanting and having a good time over their new effigy, which is shit. I think there's something in it. I think there was something inside of that bull. bull. Right, so this book this book is rather um, a big, expansive atlas. I just showed you a few of the images. Uh, they show you more apocalyptic happenings and nailing everyone up. And Moses is... Um, Exodus. Movement of Ja people. And what we got here is a mud flood city called Jerusalem. Okay, or Jerusalem. Um, and this is ground level, and there's a massive ditch and escarpment with crops. And then a cliff going back up, and then a city on it. This is either a strange national ge ge you know, geographical location chose for that, or this is a man made, or it's because of events. See it? It's just that big. And even over to Solomon's Temple, you've got bridges because there's massive escarpments all the way around, making it massively hard to penetrate. These look slightly oriental, like Chinese, don't they? Up there. So, yeah. Jerusalem on the Mapa Monday map, which is 1290. It will show you as a cogged wheel star fort and it is very, very futuristic. So, Elam looks like a modern city. It's a few high rises and the mind blowing Solomon's Temple, which is always below ground level. This is ground level. All of this, how many stories high? And it looks so modern. <laughs> But yeah, them roofs look very oriental. I really noticed that before. Um, yeah, so Solomon's Temple is below ground level and it's absolutely massive. I think it's a power plant of sorts where they do sigil magic, etc. 
and this one's got like a TV antenna outside the city this obelisk on a plinth um, why? why is it there? path comes in, ok I get that but why? I think it's something to do with this place, there's two bollards here they all got these things on top, these dome roofs communications or part of the circuit board city but a crazy bit of engineering on that guys isn't there so that will be shared with you and there's a lot of Noah's uh, Moses stuff, the Israelites and their journey and the apocalypse. this is what it looks like you get everything in here, mud flood the works so plasma discharge lightning like you wouldn't believe zapping everything you know and the ground literally vitrifies and opens up and turns into slush mud flood buildings just sink fall into chasms upside down just like they did in Port Royal Jamaica you all sunk into the mud where it was all vitrifying or it was all vibrating resonating and all the buildings just sink into the mud you see the entire city just sinking into the mud even this buildings over here just sinking into the mud plasma mud flood the resonations doing it the earthquakes if you like so look at the chasms it rips open in this place you know, some of the plasma discharge events of the past have been so powerful that they've ripped the Grand Canyon. It looks like lava just ripping out of the ground. So Sodom and Gomorrah also it shows a plasma discharge event in Isaiah City being sucked into the ground. Absolutely mental detail. Wouldn't you agree? Mind blow. Whew. So this person is unaffected in the gardens. The animals are legging it. Which is good news. Good news. So yeah, they say because of their behaviour and their debauchery that it was reset by God. Said exactly the same thing for Port Royal probably Lisbon this, this is divine intervention for sinful ways well the sinful ways are part of a parasite construct and it's brought in by the Phoenicians so a bit of a con so yeah Moses tech now what you find is some sort of organ tech I think there's more going on these we talk about a lot these jewels on chest plates for sure, rabbis etc biblical days now I know the official narrative for why Moses has lasers coming out of his head and horns as well but this guy this tech he's about to press a button and it's illuminating this is tech would you disagree yes so Moses is fitting him out with some god tech I knew them jewels were buttons of a sort so a lot of ra rabbi clovage what they wear. A mega chest plate of information. You know, press that press that button and you launch missiles. See what that button does, Red? Wow. So we're moving on and I'll link that up to you very soon. So oh, you drink. So what we got here is a book of what they say is fantasies and imaginations for what flight was like in 1498 to 1909. Okay, as you can see, fantasy imaginative for this one. Okay, but a lot of them they give you newspapers and evidences for things that have happened in the past concerning flight. Now, there's quite a few things in here which destroy the official narrative, like the age of airplane flight, etc. So I'm not sure what to think about the aerostat there. I don't think you could get airborne for very long. But what about this? Apparently they had jet-powered things like this to fly through the sky. Tatarian tech. 
and this sort of thing which is absolutely phenomenal they you know they sort of paint Tataria of great airships and sky rails so I think this is what the sky was like it's 1845 that's why we get vanilla skies because they're blocking it all and they go a fit some official narratives like Montgolfier brothers etc but some phew, just batter anything you thought you knew we've looked at balloons to carry up to 40,000 people in the past check this out there so we have steam powered locomotives advertising in the sky that makes sense this is how they were getting to work in the morning water wagon that looks quite dangerous and personally conducted tours all bird's eye views of the world water wagon and they uh, show unfortunately a globe Congo airline how fantastic the uh, angler daily to the fishing banks souvenirs of the week the trading stamps and that's what they give you so um, yeah they got some f unbelievable stuff in here so you can carry a horse apparently but when you get into the electric stuff it's absolutely fascinating come on where are you <coughs> excuse me Seems to have uh, lagged up on my. There. Okay, so we have. Um, let me just squeeze through and I'll show you. So, yeah, obscure f flying machines, like, for example, this thing. Did it fly? Well, them umbrellas are a key to it all. You see them all over this book. That's the Montgolfiers. 1700 these fantastical Phoenician balloons and this this is highly interesting I thought so then that was invented there um, in 1709 by all accounts and it's got the things numbered A H E E and I thought oh so he's looking through a sextant he's got a compass on the floor what are the balls for they look like they're made of metal or glass even I thought they were magnets at first but E states that they are globes of metal for some reason so what is A is I'm not sure I could do with some French um, that is Soffit's purse of supplies supplies supplier and that guy there look at that you think they like uh, Flight of the Sun, like Icarus. That's the name I was trying to think of when I was just talking. Um, yeah, so let's have a look what they got. Those magnificent men in those flying machines, they go up, dilly up, up, they go down, dilly on down. So there's a little German guy there. And they got like a big Frankfurter sausage. And it's got like massive guns. <laughs> Thinking about Hitler's planned invasion for Britain, you know, I think it's all part of the psyop. I'm going to say something a little bit risky, I usually do, but I think in that some of the air attacks on Britain and Germany may have been some sort of Hegelian dialectic. I mean, some of these bombings may have been a little bit more friendly than we might imagine. Why do I think that? good reason guys because they were very convenient look at the blitz in London you know it's only concentrated on the east end hardly anything at the west end there's nice of them the Germans I mean and um, one sort of token bomb on Buckingham Palace you know it just stinks same for my city with Lander Cathedral some random German pilot drops a bomb on just misses it on a Sunday afternoon in the middle of the day so this sort of proves to me the channel tunnel was always there so 
the staff out here and the French and the British, okay, and they got all the tunnels. So, the Channel Tunnel was it already there? Well, there's other narratives for other Victorian tunnels already there, so I think it was there. Okay, so you've got two staff forts either side. Um, where the staff fort is in Britain, I do not know. Um, so, that's a lie. I think that they had the tunnel there as well. So yeah, back back to um, what I was talking about. I can't remember. Hitler. Yeah, check this out, guys. This is a mind blow. Mind splat. This is like Ezekiel's wheel, yeah, yeah. Two balls, electric. Yeah, it's electric. All right. Check this out, guys. The Volatine electric machine, and it's from 1775. So what we got is essentially, okay, guys a 1775 electric flying machine which looks exactly like Ezekiel's wheels or Ezekiel's uh, vision is that, is that not Brian's plat? no they're not actually saying that's fantasy they're saying this is really give you advertisements as well And details to the invention. So electric fly machines, 1700s. Who knew? I think there's a clue with these as well. These wing suits. I think they're demagnetized. I think they may be like, I mean, levitational. I don't know why she's going topless with a seashell, but it's the Phoenician thing. 1763. And they go shopping like this again with the umbrellas, and then they go out a bit of hunting, chuck a net over a lizard. In. No. Highly freaky, but I think they might have been getting around like that. So. Please share the show out. There's some cracking stuff to come up in here in a second. I'd love to be able to share out to everyone. So, let's have visions of what it was all about. That's quite fancy, Phil, but they got the, the Casusus landing on the peacock. Isn't that interesting? There's a big clue with the peacock penguin, you know. Yes, there is. So, parachutes, how long have they been around? Well, they didn't give them to pilots in World War One. not as issue. I know they did have some, but they didn't. If the, if the Red Baron would be alive. So, they were dropping them, they were testing them, 1850. We got them a lot, lot earlier. I will show you now. Parachutes, a lot older. What about this for Tatarian tech? Think mortal engines yeah mortal engines 1850 you think it went you think it existed pretty cool isn't it what about this one do you think that plane existed right 1868 okay and they have a massive massive steel plane in the air yeah 1868 Right, brothers, 1906. I don't know what 1904. What's going on here? <laughs> so there's more planes in here, guys, from when they're not supposed to exist. Never mind steel planes. So, excuse me. <coughs> Sharona. Oh, it's disappeared. <coughs> Just refresh. Well, it's taking its own sweet time. Very sorry about that. <coughs> so, aeroplanes. What we got for aeroplanes? This one here. Okay, it's a little bit better than the Wright Brothers plane. It's got a boat on it. And this one's from 1843. An aeroplane? 1843. A full. 50 years before the Wright brothers, guys. There's your evidence that the history books tell a load of porky pies. They even got the Kitty York in museums, like, you know, Smithsonian. Because it rocks so hard, the first plane ever, ever, ever. Is that so? So, this is taking its time loading, Gallica, today. Very sorry about that. So, get a bit more obscure weird photographic uh, ones 
And don't jump, honey, don't jump. So they're trying out these uh, umbrella tech. It seems to be alright. It's not dead, is he? And they give you adver advertisements for uh, this one here, which is like a helicopter. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Zoom in. Uh, the helicopter there. Apparently they're zipping around on them. Works on pneumatics. Price, and you can buy them. No wonder they blocked the skies out, guys. So they had helicopters, wingsuits, and this wicked futuristic looking plane here, okay, from 1882. So why do they keep going on about, like, um, Wright Brothers when there's books like this out there proving it's all bullshit? Hmm? I'm not so sure about some of the more fanciful versions, comic, comedic versions, but look at that one. Steam power big huge steam power locomotive dirigible do you like that mm, pretty good eh so what about parachuting so world war one not issues they don't really think about them too much don't give them training until world war two with them and there they are in 1617 we have homo Valanus, who's jumping with a what? Yeah, I know. Before they officially, you know, exist. So training birds with a sail to fly you around, maybe, maybe. This guy has um, a load of tanks around his waist, which allow him to float in the air. One can only surmise. So that was 1709. He took to the air with them. I wonder what was in them. Maglev stuff. So, very crazy ways of getting around in the air. I'd love to be able to fly myself. It'd be really cool. I'd be flying right now. So. Mine blows. How many? Oh, look at that one. Uranus. Uranus. Not actually going there, obviously. Because that's not a real thing. But crazy adverts for balloons. So I'm going to share that to you. There's plenty more in there, guys. If you have a look, it goes on for a bit. Like literally that much of balloonage. <laughs> okay, this is absolutely phenomenal. They give you shark fish one, which I showed you before. And this one, which is a Tatarian taxi stop. I absolutely love this one. It's all mud. And the sky just jam packed full of balloons and you just get into your taxi and off you go home so yeah i think that's a definite thing so hope you enjoyed that on with the next bit of the vlog i'm going to come back shortly for a second did you enjoy that yeah i know what do you think i know for powering trains with mummy babies and mummy animals and mummies or people i don't know so um, I won't put nothing past them. We're putting uh, people in statues at this stage of the game. Oh, wax. So yeah, um, I got a new post coming out tomorrow on the Flat Earth British Think Tank channel because there's not enough time to do it on this one. So did you share this video out? Yeah. Let's get some views in. Let's get some people over. Let's get some, some excitement happening. Coming up to Shitmas. It's going to be weird. We need one another as a community right now more than ever. Would you not agree? There's a lot of us left feeling left really alone. Much more isolated than ever before because of the information. We can't really talk to the sheep. Or they're just too stupid to listen to, aren't they? And you can't really tell them because, you know, they're like little Gestapo bitches for the man, aren't they? So, you know, it's only us guys. Okay, so let's all support one another in comments and all these different formats we have on Flat Earth British. Make sure no one's left out there alone in this fucking idiocracy. Okay? Okay. Flat Firms. Love and light, and let's get on with the rest of the show. Make sure to share this out. Okay. So that was fun. Enjoyed that. So we're going to have a look at. If you were going to go to Brazil, okay, in 1816, just after the reset, apparently, okay, what 
fantastical see things would you see? Well, I'll tell you what you won't see. You won't see the favelas of San Paoli or any slummage happening. This just not a thing in these. What you do get is a beautiful, what they call colonial, what we call Tatarian world. The people who live in this country of Brazil have fantastical wealth and everything is absolutely stunning. What happens in the meantime? I don't know. These hills will be covered in shanty towns in no time at all. Before then, it was a beautiful place. As I will show you, Star Fortage up on the hill, Rio de Janeiro. So, um, the people are outstanding in this place. It really surprised me to see how well everyone's doing. You have the colonials, I'm not sure what this is up there. Okay. Um, you know, Greco Romano arch. They have cranes for their boats. There's even a little barrowed, buried arch there in the garden. The old world, guys. The old world. So they had time in 18, between 1860 and 1831 to knock up a giant viaduct. wonder if that's a Roman Venetian viaduct from the old world. What's that? It's not a flat pole, is it? some of these beautiful colours. So they're in watercolours, evidently. And I show you the beautiful happenings. So what we got? So the street. So there's a bit of money exchanging. She's dropping money out of the wall uh, out of the window into his umbrella. And she's like Let me kiss your picture of Jesus and I'll give you some money for it. Oh you're being robbed blind love but alright I'll give it to you. And you he's got an umbrella. What for? Is he in Rio de Janeiro? Isn't it boiling hot? Anyway. So, yeah, she means kind. And. A lot of money changing her hands. She's going door to door. Are oh, you going to pay for my wedding? This is how we do it here. This is a tradition. Traditions suck. And religions suck. you got people like mutilating themselves for the sake of a religion. Can you imagine such a thing? Chopping bits off yourself fucking all weird if you ask me so um if you're gonna go to a wedding or to a civic building take the fashies with you as an offering yeah or a warning of what might happen if you bitches don't toe the line remember Sodom and Gomorrah and these um, these Mexican or Brazilian uh, ladies they always got like black veils on what's that all about why they look like they're in mourning you got the same thing on the high chaparral that uh, Consuela on the High Chaparral. She got a black veil on going on. You may have been a Bonanza fan. I watched Bonanza too. I'm not a Philistine, guys. But, you know, High Chaparral had its good points, you have to admit. Yeah, yeah. So, do you want to buy some flowers and some mango? Hmm. So the lady looks Phoenician as, 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 as they do. I was going to swear. Mammy, mammy, can I have a flower? So there's a little bit of Ams for Allah going on over there. <gasps> what are these guys, do you think, then, guys? Om tonga wangi ya. Push! Om tonga yangi ya. Push! One of those, maybe, them strange cults where they flagellate as they're walking. No, not, not fat. It means whack yourself. What about this? Taking a carpet in. Or is it a snake? Well, that's nice. If you're going to go visit someone, instead of like wiping your feet, take your own fucking carpet. It's a bloody epic idea. Oh, they are taking their own carpets. Oh. They take their whole. If they come visiting, right, this family, I mean, they visit. Um, they don't leave the bird on its own. It will be on its own all day. And then they got like munchies in you. They got like a feast in you. And the drink in you. Inviting them over, guys. <laughs> Nice, uh, nice umbrella carrier carriage. Don't take them. Don't take them, kids. And what's on the pamphlets? Mm. So they're beautiful, aren't they? These, these images, really colourful. Oh, I don't know about these baldy chicks. I really, even the baby's baldy, but babies are baldy. My son wasn't baldy, but some are baldy, aren't they? Oh, money is here. Oh, it's 
bread. I don't know what's, uh, what's the matter with them and why they're all baldy. Here's a load of uh, elitists. They always look like tossers, don't they, elitists? You just don't look, you know, they're like, just crap. Look at them. I'm superior to you in so many ways. I'm superior with my lit. I'm superior with my physique. And I'm superior with my intellect. <coughs> oh, really? Who says? God told me that I'm better than you. I'm more important than you. It's not important than me. Oh, I literally own this country. And we're less important than them. Yes, we're less important than them to me. Bullshit. All. People stir things. Uh, uh, uh. In it, guys. You know what I mean, don't you? I know. It's hard work. So I don't know what's going on here. Is it funeral age? I don't know. So. Literally love the colour. So vibrant. The clothes. So I'm thinking that might be a dead though. I think that might be a clue. So, cool. Got dead those. Any more dead those? See, I wouldn't. I wouldn't old shit over this guy. Let him get wet. Game. Carrying lady round, a lady ship. But she's like put on a few pounds, so she can't really walk. She has a little baby in her hands. I think she might not have her own baby there. <laughs> I've just borrowed it. So I'm thinking they got killer weed in Brazil in the 1860s. Yeah, wouldn't you say? Cool, she got a bit of red eye, haven't she? Cool, stone crows, haven't she, lad? <laughs> and that's the elitist stuff that they wear. <laughs> Puke. So. So they're doing waiting for the uh, squire to come down and go out. The men are work on the coach house for these bag of shits. I've always, I'm, I've always been like if uh, elites are like you know them lot. I've just something about me. I'm just not a fan. Oh, that's nice. It's a bit of marriage going down there when things were normal. You know, when men married women. Yeah. I hope that's not a dead baby. Is that a dead baby? Flat flowers. Does he look happy? Nah. nah. I think he's just taking it off for a walk. Flashy pan. Flashy here. Uh, flashy pram. And then you take your cross carpet out for a walk and have a little dance in front of it. Tch. Whatever. And. Look, it's a Phoenician. He's showing you his plaque. 1815. So, 1822. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. So, a nice colour green going on there. Doing a bit of business and stuff, as they do. You know. Any. So oh, some nice buildings. Let's move on because I need to get on. I have some stuff to show you. So I'm not sure what's happening with this guy. He's in the air. Oh, he's 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 um, not real. He's got fireworks. He's like um, penny for the guy things. Taking the boot for a drag as you do. So it's not such a bad scene. Oh look, they're giving you they're just fucking battering that, that dummy. So I don't know who that's an effigy of. Uh Effigies. Oh that's really sinister. Horrible. So let us move on. And then we have this. Look at all of this. Finery. All that time ago. Oh, the world has changed. Everyone was immac immaculately dressed as well, have you noticed? Well, them lot were. 
and add some fine footage. Fine indeed. So yeah, I'm going to share that to you. This I'm sure there's loads more images. I put that into the wow, <laughs> into the descriptions box. Wow, look at them. I've never seen anything like that. Have you? First, first time like. Maybe she's like twirls like a twirling dervish. Like a trance thing, yeah? Because they look like they twirl, don't they? Cool. And some dead vicar. What's what's a vicar? What does that mean? A vicar. Vic. Uh, Vic. Er. Uh, I don't know. So. Alright, feastage, bit of musicage, bit of high chaparralage. Right, I'm going to move on. I'm sure they show most, many more exciting things in there, but we need to get on. So this is a cool picture I'm going to share with you, and then we're going to go on to medieval strangeness. Okay, so this is a procession of Christ. Okay, and it says, Josu for the faceless knight, guys. Is this for who it is? It's jo Joseph. Joseph. Joseph, 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 could it be? Kids carrying a fair chase. So let's have a move along and see. Guys carrying a arc. Adam and Eve in front. So I'm guessing that's Noah. And the faceless knight's right at the beginning. So's the fair chase. Okay, let's move along. All these things. The Sibylline. So there's a lot of sibylines there. Sibylline, sibylline, sibylines. So there's a load of, load of prophetic people. Guy with a cross. See these lot? They're lethal. The follow me, mate. I'll fucking sort them out. Yeah. Oh my hand, I'll sort these bastards. He's got a kryptonite sword, guys. Sinister, isn't they? Huh. Ice pick through the forehead, boss. Now, now we're giving him the green dagger. They're like time bandits. They are like they are time bandits. That's what's going on. So let's carry on. All those strange creatures. Oh, it's God. It's okay. It's got scepter. Everything's gonna be fine. God's being towed by on a Phoenician thing by a guy who sat behind him, wishing he never had that job. Um, God sat on a, a ball, an orb. I will carry the sacred house brick. No, let I carry the sacred house brick. The fishes. Fishy, isn't it, guys? See this? This is a grill for later. I'm going to grill stuff up. There's a giant carrying a infant. Wow, look how big he is. Yes. And he is who? St. Christopher is a giant. St. Christopher, he's a big dude. So there's the Bible all in one picture. Linked below in this video to study it in more time. Don't trust these lot little scallywags, do you? What's with that? Ah. Right, motley crew, them ones, aren't they? We see some more carriers on with these cherubinuskis any second. So, time! Time for middle aged strangeness. Let me just bring them up in a second. Middle age. Weird history. So, I'm going to go through some weird history first. And I think, oh dear, this keeps happening. So, um, I don't know what's happening here, whether they're having their water penal, penis restructured or what have you, but I can honestly say, guys, right, gals, that I will would not be taking a drink. From this font, help yourself. You probably would, but I'm not gonna. It's a bit too penisy, you know what I mean? So, yeah, dick font. So, what else was going on in the medieval times? So, hey, Polly, you going down the shops? Yes, love. You're not going past that penis tree again, are you? No, love, I'm going down to Mabel's having a cup of tea. All right, love. please don't go to that penis tree again, will you, love? No, love, no, I'm not going near it. None of us do. So apparently they're penis trees in the past. Trees? They grow penises. Don't get ideas. That's just really weird. Um, I don't know. 
because his history is weird, but I would say it's bunny rabbit creatures and they, they were real. I don't know. Things get strange around here. Um, nothing weirder than gassing a few hundred thousand men in the First World War. Basically, these men were ill for the rest of their lives. They were blinded. They were shocking to see, apparently. These are all men, yeah, that are getting gassed. They'd done it 100 years ago, yeah. No problem with killing millions of people. And then everyone's like, well, they wouldn't do it again. What about this guy? He's got a... Um, it's a knight's helmet. He can't see shit, obviously. He just falls in the mud and dies in an instant. Um, but he's got a little ta 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 on. Maybe he sees out these slits here, yeah, maybe. It's cool, isn't it? You need a nice shiny helmet. And that wouldn't scare me one bit. Or that. He's got his EM protection on. If you fall in the mud, you ain't getting out. Your nose is stuck in there. And why the elongated head? Yeah, your brain's your brain's only gonna come to there, isn't it? What's all this? What's in there? What's going on? What going on? So I think she's real. I think this is uh, possibly a, a real conehead. Yeah. She hasn't got a face, she doesn't need it. Bit like the plane in the background, she don't need that either. Real? I don't even know, guys. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, for reasons that I don't know. I just don't know. What does it mean? Half man, half machine. What does it mean? What does it mean? Mm -hmm. Tell me on a postcard. FEB, PO Box, FEB. So, is that sinister? Are they wearing Mickey Mouse masks? This is a theatre. Why am I feeling all uh, and ill when I look at that? Why is that really disgusting and trippy and weird? Are you getting the same buzz? Yeah, I know. Imagine now looking back at you. Fuck, you know, I'd be out there like a shot. I go in there, though. He's like, I wouldn't go in there. At all. But I go in there. It's in France. It's near the Mont Rouge. Mont Rouge. It's a horror museum. Hitler. Um, apparently, there's a lot of bad press about Hitler. You see him with um, a lot of females, but in this case, it seems to be maybe not quite a sixth form college, maybe a bit younger, but they seem quite young females, do they not, Hitler? But is this image placed in? I can't tell, because everyone else looks fuzzy and he's still. But he looks at his little face, he looks quite happy there, doesn't he? But, you know, being a, a megalomaniac, um, sort of, um, well, I don't know, major fascist. Um, loads of photographs of him, people loving him and being friendly and stuff. Yeah. And he loved his dog. Unless, you know, and Eva Braun, she's not bad looking, guys. Have you seen them beat shots? I don't know. See this guy? Right nutcase. It's basically, he's a ventriloquist, right? Of the era. And his um, ventriloquist dog got in a fire. So he renamed it Burnt Face Man and kept it going, hoping no one would notice. You're a nutter. He looks like a nutter. So. This, look at the little fluffy hair on his little baby, and all she did was ask for some food. Can I have some food? No, stick it out in a box. So, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just playing. It looks like it's been put in a box to me. People do the weirdest things in this plane, don't they? I was sent to the corner a lot in school to put my hands on my head, quite a lot, which I would never adhere to, by the way. Get your hands back up, they're aching and the blood's run out of them, sir or miss. And why do we have to call him Sir or Miss? Anyway. Yeah, Miss. You missed the point, Miss. So this was what's marching down your streets very soon. So, this is the poorest kid in the world at this moment in time. Looking at her parents with dear life. Why do you hate me so? Why did you stick me with this man? What did I do so wrong? You said you loved me, parents. You don't love me. You just stuck me with Satan. Or, you know, he, he makes... My God. He, he makes Rasputin look cool. Look at him. Poor child. I know, guys. Breaks the heart, doesn't it? What about this? Mind unveiled the YouTuber pair of video out about this material. Um, that you could basically put on glasses which will make you see into the ethereal realm or the astral realm or depending on which frequency you're on demons and see everything that's already there looking at us you can't see them but they're there, there right behind you right now breathing on your neck you can't see them they're there so the glasses um, I think that they might have put these glasses on this kid 
and he sat there and she's holding him down while he's got all demons coming towards him and he's hallucinating. I think these are these glasses, these real they live glasses that they're using on this child. Because they're fucking crazy. The NHS was set up by Baytham Powell as a socialist organisation. So I, th I thought Britain wasn't exactly communist or what have you, or socialist, but apparently because they all wear uniforms, it's all uniformic in schools. You know, why have I got to wear a uniform so everyone can look the same? That's just bullshit. That's just bullshit. There was loads of poor kids in my class. I couldn't I always had hands-me-downs and clothes that didn't fit. I didn't have clothes that fitted half the time. I couldn't have hand-me-downs. They're all females in my family. So. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, nobody dressed the same. And I never, ever wore a school tie. And I had a urine in. I was the first in my school with a urine. God, I have hell over that. Yeah, they put me on a stage, me and my friend Billy, in front of... 1200 pupils and said look at these little gay boys with their earrings etc can you imagine doing that in this day and age yeah they fucking be like in jail and stuff but in that day and age it was just like permissible Thing, things had changed that much yeah now they're like people getting married didn't they same sex marriage it's just nuts I don't know what that is but I got a feeling that when you play this piano here yeah the mouth opens and she sings you a song which would be really really unnerving wouldn't you agree? I don't want to see that in action. 1860. So, yes, that's right. People have always been stupid. Look, she hasn't even left herself an air gap and it's condensing up. How hasn't she got hypoxia? How has she passed out? And she does pass out. That's going to stick in the ground anyway. Didn't you learn lessons from Agincourt, woman? Look at this. Hmm? People are ridiculously stupid and how quick they cower down to the man. I can't exactly know what's going on here. I would say it's a tannery. And he's like, <laughs> I'm going to write on there, Cyril is gay, look. He's writing on there and he's like, I love the bastard now. Cyril's pissed on the floor. So what are the masks? You try to get that milk, I'll punch your fucking lights out, mate. What do you think, guys? They're pissed, is they? Or are they ODing on milk? What's the masks for? Because of dye or something. Something going on with dye as well, isn't there? So, here's Bacchus, but he's also... Bacchus is head, but he's also got Pan. So Pan and Bacchus, I think, are the same entity, aren't they? Yeah? And he's like, Don't worry, fair maiden. He's got, like, elf ears as well. And all flowers. Like an elfling creature. And she's just come back from, uh, basically, the water. Welcome. This is Earth. You're going to like it here. No, you're not. And in the Roman days, you know what they're famous for? Backside feasts, etc. And But they also got really block up. She's like, he's like, he or she, or whatever that is. She's like, God, he's like, have a blast of this. This will sort you out. He's like, oh, yeah, they, oh, yeah, this is wicked, wicked, blah, 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 thanks, blah, thanks, blah. So it's been around a while, haven't it? It's been around a while. So, yeah, a snail rides in a hare, rides in a dog. So, seemed to be a bit of symbiosis going on in the animal kingdom. Seemed like they all got on together. So... I don't know, but she's not going to take a look, and I don't blame her either. Yeah, there's carry-ons going on. So I don't know what's going on, except for, she's like, maybe she's not real, maybe she's a radio. Maybe she's trying to get a station. Tokyo. Um, no, I think it's going to be a nipple ring. Gonna, look at the ring I'm going to have in my nipple. Yeah, no. So, this is all done in a historical context, by the way. So, I think this lady's been given the wrong baby. I think this happens a lot. Did you, basically, did they take your child away from you for a long time when it was born? Yeah. Did they bring you the right one back? I'm just saying they might not have, guys. You might have been given, you might have been given a, a changeling. Or somebody else is completely different. Psychopaths, maybe. You could have been given the omen. Yeah. Are, are, you, are you the ambassador for Sweden? Hmm? Or, or, or Swindon, I should say. Hmm? Well, you could have, you could have the, you could have the Antichrist a child you don't even know but I'm just saying like so she's like fuck me this is not mine and he's like no that's not my mother Jesus Christ they don't even recognise one another but I don't think mother bonding is a necessity or it really is happening like what I'm saying is I don't think all parents bond to their children they just pour up I think is what I'm saying so more mermaidage funny how they're all ginger she's got a lovely red hair ah. so uh, a wheelbarrow full of people on flames okay our stomach face demon dude is going to take his lunch home with him and 
ooh. Do you know when somebody's really annoying, like me, and they r- rub your face? It's like, rub your face, or like rub a horse backwards on your face. That's what he's doing. He's going like, how do you rub a horse backwards? And he's going like that on his face. He's like, get fucking off me, get off me. Unless it's a horny hair, something else is going on. I can't think of anything funny to say about that, guys. You may in comments, okay? I'm not going to attempt it. <laughs> Bit of monkey business going on there, guys. Oh dear. So, yeah, strange history, isn't it? Look at the fish. Fish head fish. Pathetic. Pathetic, aren't they? So, yeah, he was going to give him a kinetic blast, being a cephaloid. Bow, boosh! And the Bellini was going to get a kinetic blast, but he got an arrow in his butt just in time, saving the day. Okay. Oh, what was me? I look stupid. Yeah, you do. You look fucking ridiculous. So, this guy lives hand to mouth. Ah, oh, he's got a hand on his head. I wonder if they did that, scalpeled hands on the heads, and they moved. Look at the colour in that. This guy looks like Boris Johnson, always talking out of his ass. <laughs> oh, well. So, it's freaky, isn't it? Nice like colour. I like the colour for the Middle Ages. Look at that. <laughs> Right, let me check my time piece here, how we are for our time. Okay. Moving along quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should use a wheelbarrow like I suggested on one of my last vlogs. He says he's a legitim. A legum. He's a legitim. <laughs> right, why is he waiting there with a pink top on looking pissed off like he's in the doctor's waiting room with his dick hanging out? Yeah, really strange. Are you laughing? Don't laugh, this is in a historical context. Why is the thing tied around his ankle? Uh, he tied around his leg. Yeah, I get it, I get it. So, women do pick their nose. They're disgusting, in fact. I seen a woman at traffic lights the other day eating a snot during a pandemic. But I think you should eat your snot anyway. The cure's probably in there. Yeah. So, yeah, women have a good pick. She's having a good pick, can't fault her. And he's like, have a pick here. <laughs> Uh, he's getting naked there. What's going on here, guys? I don't know. Medieval era is very strange. I think that's a dick fish. I think that's that bad dick fish that I was talking about in the past with my son. There's a real one. Okay. Don't want to know the details of the bad dick fish. So, the monkey got an arrow in his butt. Somebody is a cracking shot. He's like, you bastard. <laughs> you bastard. I heard so bad. Jughead. This is how you got your name. Jug on the head. He didn't get a time to jug him in the head. A lot of jugs happening in this video. <laughs> Are you bastard? Smack! I said clean the fucking stools. Not the stools. Oh, she's bubbled us. So when she sent them to clean the stools, the bitch with one leg. Okay, that's giving her a smack in the head. She meant the shit. Okay. I said clean the stools, you crafty man. Yeah, not the stools. I think that is probably what's going on. There's that pervy rabbit again. Yeah. It's like, get off my butt, you pervy rabbit. I don't know what's going on here, but apparently, you know, maybe the leather industry, they use shit for tunnelization processes. This guy's collecting. Can I have another drop, please? Hang on, I'll just. Sh so I think people were pooing out the window in the past, collecting it in jazz. I don't know. I don't know. Ah, so let's have a look at this one. Yeah, it's just pile everyone in. Makes perfect sense. Devil carrying someone off. Oh, no. Oh, Nobis. Nobis is coming. You know what that is. Yeah. That's what happens when you end up in that mouth, eh? You're Nobis. Hey, I'm gonna hit you with my golden axe. So, a golden axe wielding maniac bunny is gonna chop him in the head. There's a lot of bunny gangsterism in the past. There's Mothman. It's cool, isn't it? I don't know what's behind him. You can see what's behind him. It's really sweet. Sweet little creature. So Yeti's a real, because Karen um, B got one living in a loft. She says it's out in the woods, but I reckon it's in a loft. Right, close. And, well, don't even know. So, let's have a look. Wow, this is fantastic, isn't it? So, remember I mentioned then Chad Banuski's being gangster? 
if you accidentally, if you were Pan, you know, in a bad day, because Pan's, you know, just a, a Pan after all. Um, he's walking down a lane, back street, one day, um, and he gets basically, let's have him, kick him in. They're kicking shit out of him, guys. Look, it's like kicking, bastard, kicking. I'll get him off, fucking have him. <laughs> kick him in, tie him up, hit him with a stick. They're basically, like I just showed you on that biblical depiction with that green knife, um, they're gangsters. Cherubinuskis, if you go down a lane, they're going to jump you and fuck you up. No, no, Pan wasn't really doing much there, was he? Alright, he was just going along doing his pan pantheon pantheonism. Whatever. Um, I had to get a phone call looking in the mirror. Like a bridge over troubled waters. And basically, you need um, defences on the battlefield of the medieval field because they had a lot of cows, and cows can do. Um, a splat. In this case, a different sort of splat. So I hope, you, I hope you didn't laugh at any of that. This was done in an historical context for for learning. Okay, we get further ahead. Okay, so one more, one more um, from Strange Antiquity. Okay, oh dear. No, stop laughing. I did say they use wheelbarrows. Either he's put his dick in a microwave oven because he wants to get dick cancer, so we can get free marijuana, um, like Stan's dad did on South Park. Um, but basically. Satan. Good morning, madam. Anything from the penis trolley, woman? Um, anything less penisy, Satan? No, just a giant penis, I'm afraid. So, the devil, if he is going to be the devil, and you're going to be like Nemesis the God and all of that, oh, yeah, of course you would choose that. It's more fucking ridiculous otherwise, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> some things are a given, aren't they, guys? So, um, yeah, um, my views on Flat Earth British Think Tank channel. I'm just going to talk about my channels in a minute. I'll let I have more. Um, than they are on this. So we've reached 24... Am I getting this right? 24,000 on this channel. Okay. Um, so they are restricting views because my views are way less than they were one year ago when I was on only 5,000 subscribers. As you can see, five months ago, many, many more views. And they are not touching my Think Tank channel because whenever I chuck an extra out on there, I have loads and loads of views on that. So if you don't know about what channels we have, we have the Celtic Tatarian channel, 1,000 videos for you to enjoy, 500 on this subject of alternative history, the rest is on Flat Earth, and me talking, and different shows, etc. Um, and this channel here, the Flat Earth British Think Tank, where I went live last night, where like, we do our think tanking, hanging out as a community together. And there's a few videos on there I haven't really used. So, yeah. That's what we've been up to, and if you want to learn about this subject, because you're new to the channel, you can find everything out on the Flat Earth British Info website, flatearthbritishinfo.com, and... Uh, uh, uh. Right. i got a shop, apparently. Right, I've got like hundreds of different FEB things. Click that, you get into a shop, t-shirts, frisbees, you name it, and our legendary the holy grail of our flat earth book you can get it on amazon you can get it in a physical copy i put the link in the description box you can get it through this website or the beauty book link that will be below this video I'm, I'm on instagram facebook all of these things here you can get i'll link a few of them up you can get on there and find out what's going on in the world of flat earth british and you can also um, donate to flat earth british rent fund and barbaria we're going to get barbaria on the go got to get something sorted in the next week or so Okay. These are our subjects. Mud flood, Tataria, permanent star forts, fasces, comets, technosmia, antiquity, tech shapes, giants, maps, airships, words, science, world fairs, research, architecture, art, weather, aquatech, fireplaces, news and activities. If you click that, you will get to a load of books, maps and collections in the resources. I mean thousands and thousands. So do enjoy them, okay, because they're all free. And this is my son who does e-waste, earning money. Getting money and gold out of shit. Computer components, etc. He does it all professionally. His name's Walsh, Lawrence Leedka, Walsh Dragon Metals. There he is there. He's not far off of a thousand subscribers. And it's his sole day Monday. So I would absolutely love it if we could get Lawrence to a thousand subscribers for Monday. Um, I will leave the link in the description box below. And you will learn something from my son. Because he's absolutely fascinating. Okay? Thanks, thanks. So, images of the day, and I'm out of here because time is getting on. Okay, now I was going to share some music with you. 
because um, I've written a lot of things here. But I'll just whiz through these and then I'll be back on screen. Now, Lee, who is Flat Earth British Sub, is okay. I've had emails from him. He hasn't deserted me. We're just going to give him a little bit of time to get his shit together and then he's going to be back, okay? Looking forward to it. So I don't know what these devices are, guys, but they have been definitely melted. Look, melted. Melted. Some sort of capacitors. Computer components made of a crystalline structure. And we talk about somatic patterns quite a bit in church windows on Flat Earth British. That's one of our fields. It seems there was a bit in house fighting. It seems Zeus is going after um, basically Venetians or mermen with his fasces. So there's a bit of in-house fighting. Seems Zeus the Olympians was not really getting on with the water people in this picture. So these are hi uh, hybrid pictures made out of buildings, bay windows into a somatic pattern. I find them beautiful. But not as beautiful as these. Oh my word. <laughs> now the modern artworks, I can't give you the artist, I'm sorry, but you can drag and drop them, find out. Um, but what they are is Phoenician overtoned, and they are so multi complex, made of metals and stones and all sorts of materials, but they are fantastical to look at. Do you see what I mean? This looks like Jacob Zeller's image of Jerusalem, a floating city. What do you think, guys? Fantastic, aren't they? A few more of them. Look at that. So this will be up tonight at nine o'clock GMT. I'm sorry I put a post up yesterday, promising you a show last night, but um, I made I fucked it up. I basically done a vlog. I never pressed record. <laughs> I did it again, and. I'd mashed it up. Doesn't that always happen? And I wasn't thinking right. There you are, look at that. How beautiful. How trippy. See all the Phoenicians in it though? They don't leave them out, do they? Look at that one. Okay. <clears throat> so, concerning the ongoing events at the moment, guys with the incredible strangeness. Now, according to the British government, the official government statistics for flu and pneumonia deaths in recent years, okay guys? No. Deaths from flu in England and Wales. From 2014 to 2015, 28,000 deaths. From 2015 to 2016, 11,800 deaths. 2016 to 2017, 18,000 deaths. And 2017 to 2018, 26,000 deaths. From the same period of 2019 to 2020, nine, excuse me, 394 deaths. 394 deaths. Less than ever. People are dying. Less than ever. Or if they are dying, it's the oldest pensioners and everybody else that they're getting, the, the people at the bottom of this shit all. Deaths from pneumonia in England and Wales, okay. Um, for 2014, uh, 30,000. 2015, 30,000. 2016, 30,000. 2017, 30,000. 2020, 13,000. 13,000. That much less. From 30,000 to 13,000. So. All what I just said to you guys, the above information, can be verified from the official government figures. Okay, 20,000 less flu deaths than average during, the, this, during this year of 2020, guys. Okay, at least 17,000 less pneumonia deaths than the average year during 2020. Beautiful, aren't they, there? So that equals the total of 37,000 combined average deaths that have disappeared in 2020. And that's the official government. Never mind the fact that they degraded it on, I think it was the 19th of, the 9th of March, 
to a non-infectious disease and yeah everyone's forced to wear a mask well if you're going to do that so we looked into um, ceilings sorry to keep jumping subjects but I do like to chuck a little bit of that in it's the only way I can get away with saying in my video without getting rid of the video you see guys just put it in here somewhere okay it's the flat earth that's killing the channel and in the, ch in the thing they stifling it because I've got flat earth British in the title back so these are somatic patterns now how are they doing them on ceilings um, I'll give you an idea of what I think may be going on I've had it given it some thought now these look like jet engines these unbelievable somatic patterns in the ceiling of this building unbelievably like jet engines and what I'm thinking is if you had a somatic experiment below um, in water, mercury, what have you sand, mercury, whatever substance and then reflected it onto a mirror and then onto the ceiling then the person that's producing it would be able to use it as a stem plate and copy it out because I can't imagine how they're doing it it's too fantastical uh, geometry and math you see guys it's, it's mind blowing stuff the designs are stunning so intricate, look at all this spaghetti that purple thing in the middle, I love that cool that's nice so they're fancy full but they're using antiquitech into geometry, secret geometry power of life etc, which I find beautiful Let me know in comments what you think about everything, please, guys. And I'll catch up with you as well later. I do go through comments, as all of you know by now. Um, this is something I do. Part of my fight of Britishness is to keep up with the community, find out what's going on, and think tank. This is where we pick up all the information in the comments. But excuse me about the noise. Um, I don't know what that is. Maybe you could tell me, guys. I can't really tell what that is. I don't know. So this is that melted building I showed this week on my Celtic Tatarian channel. Um, on my I can't even remember. Five British Think Tank channel. Got so many. So if you look at a waveform proof, say an oscilloscope or something else of a similar nature, what you'll find is side on, you'll see these zigzag wave patterns like this, and they rem you know they're very reminiscent to these. In fact, they look like it. Crazy doors. Coming in, Pan. The water's lovely. Not again. River nymphs. Crazy storage. This hot wog has what? And he's been melted and solidified. He doesn't look happy about it, and who can blame him? And this is a giant atlas for giantage. Because no man can do it. And after a reset, like I just showed you with Sodom and Gomorrah, you collect up all the bits if you're a Phoenician, you don't bother wearing clothes. And uh, collect all of the. First thing he grabbed hold of was a shiny shield or the mirror. And collecting all of the stuff up after a reset. Good stuff. Repair some stuff. And these are the survivors. Would you disagree with that? Is the case there? The whole world smashed. Red brick world is smashed. Phoenicians are there in place. With what are they have got from their reset? The booty. The souvenirs. And they make these sort of civilizations. These sort of dwellings. Again, with this. With the veil. I can really couldn't tell you what that is. I, mean, I, I was thinking it was seeds, but then I was thinking it could be like um, growing, a stone growing, like what Sylv says on New Earth. Very possibly. So no, let me know in comments. And there's another melted civilization. Beautiful Tatarian lady, and I noticed the silver tech 
and there's like a belt but it's down and it covers like ovaries is this some sort of protection or is this some sort of science for some sort of um, fertility thing I think this might be a tech it's just where they're placed like look how low they, they come down and they're right over the ovaries offering it some EM protection maybe up with ovulation I don't know guys so these are the people that came before and got killed a little dead mouse there bullet in the head oh, I got bullet in the head oh, I can't mate they're not invented yet oh right yeah yeah shut up interesting shot of Germany a flood but I'm wondering about this thing here could they have really in this period which I'm taking is the 20s is this a weatherometer? what do you think this is? curious isn't it? out of place for that time look how deep the water is in this German city don't know so the story with this chick is she's like Lady Godiva okay and she gets naked right she gets on a horse naked and goes through the streets of Coventry in time right in the past I don't know the exact narrative because I really ever remember that bit anyway so that's nice wouldn't mind time travelling there's then wave functions again and ship ceilings look like holes of ships if it was all upside down could you really float and this is what this lockdown is doing to me Kermie's getting it it ain't on guys it's sad so these are a load of gingers again left Asian's got the mirrors beautiful colour beautiful picture again this proves that these plaques are mirrors black mirrors in this case you've got a mirror it's some sort of communication Phoenicians similar to the water reflection tech and it's it's dead in the mirror dead in there Patagonian giants and mermaids tarting themselves up as always with mirrors I uh, just brush my hair and make myself look beautiful because I look like I might be a mongoloid. They both look like they have Down syndrome, you think. Tell the difference between a Tatarian chick and a Phoenician one. This one's wasted and a lot more lazy. <coughs> a bit more chubby. But I got the one jerk out. Can you imagine that in this day and age if you went everywhere and everyone was just having like one jerk hanging out and stuff, guys? Cause a lot of problems. Maybe they just don't think like that. They don't in indigenous populations, do they? It's just like, you know, everyone's skimping around, nobody takes any fucking notice. It's just people, isn't it? But in the Western society it's a bit different. That's Elizabeth turning up with the Phoenicians, Elizabeth the first. Out of the water with the information. Restructuring water using lead crystal and uh, Phoenician. And again, got a kid pissing around on his head with grapes. What a carry on with these Phoenicians! Now, you don't need a door that big, okay? You need a door this big. So, what's all this bit? Oh, it was to light up the massive hole that was too high. I like the green tiles, by the way. So, people were this big and they needed doors that big in the past.
beautiful isn't it check this out horny dude so it's, it's um, Zeus he's got his fasces he's got his fasces on he's got more than that on so, oh, hello pretty lady oh, I love you oh. and there he is he's got a a serpent he went on Bit odd looking no? so yeah Zeus got a um, <laughs> sorry guys I know I'm, I'm silly at times I, I do get silly moods uh, you know there's nothing funnier than the absurdity of people and stuff and things is there guys I know so what do you think of these steel hats they look steel and I think they might be psychics like the ones in water out of minority will report sacred information so um, tech airspace something else are they elongated heads something spooky about them this is proving that Hermes uh, Tumagistus is connected with the Phoenicians to Hermes Tumagistus Phoenician Egyptorum and a bit of Egyptian as well like Contorus Conditorus so yeah Hermes and the Phoenicians in the same narrative here's when the Sahara Desert in a Middle Ages map was all green with Kong mountain range see all green And the interior of America not yet exposed. And these are crazy Phoenicians, they've got to cover everything with their statues to an insane point. So they make you actually nauseous and feeling a bit sick with it all. Yeah? Even the fountains restructured with Phoenician statues. He's waving. I don't know if that's real. I can't confirm or deny if that's real. Stop, ladies. I'll sort this out. We're just going to get the old rotter now. Hang on a minute. Sent one of his buddies in to beat up the Manator at the centre. And these are like groupies waiting for him to come out. It's King Knight. He's just killed him. This part's getting uh, ripped apart by a lion. Head. Head on the floor. Or bits. We'll clean it up for you. We'll clean up the Manator and lion attacks, madam. And there's like the security of the day. There's two people, women up there as well. He's like heroing it up, chivalrying it up for them as well. I'll be a hero. Ladies, I'll be a hero. When we lived in symbiosis with animals and they didn't want to bite your face off. See me, I got a great secret. You wanna know what it is? Yeah, take a look, yeah, mate. Yeah, that's right. The maze. The maze is a secret to the, to the minds, to the brian, to ascension. Do you not get it? Eh? Do you not get it? Eh? Yeah, you can see that I've ascended. I've gone cock eyed. It's a secret. These are Welsh women in Wales and they wear witches' hats or Welsh hats. Which are elongated and like top hats. These are traditional Welsh clothes, traditional Welsh ladies in Wales land. Indeed. So, the story of frozen mammoths is intriguing indeed. No frozen mammoth was ever found in ice. All have been found in frozen mud. Perhaps one of the most noted thousands of found thusly in Berestock uh, mammoth. Found in the Berestock River in northern Siberia. Like all mammoths found wherein some comment was made concerning the skull. It was noted that the skull had pink was pink from hemorrhaging in the head. Donating death through suffocation by drowning in mud it would seem that all of the Siberian and they died in an instant some of them were food in them off died in mud look at the flatness and Aurora Borealis reflecting off the domage see that some probably a hundred mile away that's a flatness and it should be flat coming curve this way as well as that way but it's just not there because it's not there it's 
This is a picture by Klimt. Um, he basically painted ladies in a beautiful style and fashion. Yes, they might have copied them off a stencil from the floor. This was melted. Bits added later. Again, with Phoenicians and golden chest plates, do they offer some protection to the, the technology? It's like an exoskeleton, you see. And giant book on Holland. This is Rosalind Chapel. All of these nodules are supposed to donate a musical note. They can be interpreted, but they reckon the Holy Grail is in this column there. Rosalind Chapel, Scotland, associated with Knights like, Templar and the Sinclairs, etc. So, are they reptilian feet? Yes? Check where it is. Whatever was there has been melted. to a fat blob of meltedness. Venetians. Playing a song. Crystal, these glass tubes. Bacchus. Who is? Apparently Pan. Wow. Wow. I think this is coded. Spikes in the wheel, broken wheel. What's the significance of the leaf, the wheel, broken? So, even in Phoenician fashion, this is a sib line. So, this is an oracle. Um, but even in their clothes, you know, they leave the gap for naked prestige. Look at this skyscrapers. Not in every case, obviously. <laughs> what's in there burning I've hurt my leg I've put my miniskirt on again instead of my trousers and look what happened I told you not to skimp around in the miniskirt Harold what did I tell you not the miniskirt love not again okay this is happening a lot in society so, a giant with a wound for not wearing a pair of fucking trousers that's gonna be shirt. He's lucky that one two inches higher. Here's Bacchus again. He's arrived and the Phoenicians have literally put a bed on the beach. You get off the ship. You don't even you know, have to go far. Uh, she's waiting there. On the beach with bed ready. He's like, can you see it in his eyes? He's like, I've got it sorted, look. He's got any grapes, booze, big bag of drugs probably. Strange critters that don't exist in reality. And when they arrive in there, people are going to be mind-fucked. Yeah, strange to touch that, isn't it, guys? <sighs> Melted city. It's not so pretty. Yeah, give me that fucking crown back. You don't have to go on. No, I don't my crown. Get off it. Get off it. He's on a ball too. Meltage. Look at this. Everything else vitrified. Hello? Oh my shit! No, I just dropped a coffee. Hi! Yeah! 
Hang on a minute. I'll ring it back now. Two secs. I just fucked a copy up on my computer. 29. Okay. Okay, enough. Sorry about that. I just spilled a coffee on my table. I need to get a cloth. Excuse me. Uh. Oh, he'll have a fucking headache in the morning. Oh, that bastard. He coming drunk again. He'd be like, oh, Jesus Christ, what did I drink last night, love? So you come in stinking drunk, love? I don't know. Nice little scammer, love. Oh, he, he was a little bit more... Ex they, she's a little bit more excessive. Cool, you got to be careful. Meltage. Sorry about that. And I just spilled coffee down the back of my computer. I have to sort that out now. So I don't know why they're listening. So like, hang on, what's she saying? She's on about me. Mate, she's not going to be on about you. There's no chance in that in a million years, is there? No, that's true. Ah, class clat. And this is J906. Beautiful, isn't it? So, that was images of the day. I'm going to come back now. Sorry about the little, little the phone call there, but I'm going to carry on whatever because that's me. Five bay. What's your reckon? So that was fun. I need to go off and make a cup of coffee and a cup uh, and a and a thing. So, what you reckon on that? Could they really have been petrified stone people? Yeah. Uh, the waxworks, could they have been people? Yeah. What do you think about me chucking infants or uh, mummies in for fuel? Um, would they not be beyond the poss bounds of possibility? Would they not give a shitness about what they're burning to put them um, for ritualistic purposes in statues in city centres? Because they're showing you that they are in some. Hmm? Also, crazy airships. The airplane was around m much, much earlier than they say according to this book narrative, even in the 1700s, electric flying machines. In this book. Check it out, I'll link it below. So I hope you enjoyed your time here. Yeah? Um, disclaimer, obviously there was no breasts or penises in this video whatsoever, as per normal. Disclaimer, I'm out of that shit. Everything's fine. <laughs> we have fun, don't we, guys? Yeah, I, I epic not giving a fuckness. So that's it for me today. I've got to clean up this uh, mess I just made. Which I hit my coffee over. Peace and love to you all, guys. Be good and don't do anything I wouldn't do. See you very, very soon. Keep an eye out on Flat Earth British Think Tank channel. Make sure to subscribe. Share, share, subscribe. Subscribe to my son as well. Whilst Dragon Mouse is his birthday. Share, share, share. Thanks.